Hi, y'all. This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Remnant with God's Church of Love online on Saturdays and Tuesdays. And we are getting ready right now to bring the word. Saturday afternoon message. God bless you as you hear what God has to say. No matter what goes on in your life, your flesh is not to be in the driver's seat. Your attitudes are not to lead the way. And your mouth is not to contaminate the road in front. So you have to be very careful how you handle life and its vicissitudes. <clears throat> because I'm telling you, Satan knows what kind of trick bags to throw your way. And those familiar spirits have been with you a very long time. And even though they think they know you well, God knows you better. So trust yourself in God's hands and trust yourself handling life God's way. And you will find life being way more easier on you than you will leaning to your own understanding and handling things your own way, which hasn't turned out too well now, has it? <clears throat> anyway, now we are getting ready to read. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still clearing that <clears throat> old stuff out from that cold. Now we're going to Psalms 91, and then we will go to Romans chapter 8. Now this is something a lot of times when we read, it, <clears throat> sorry, when we read about God's promises, we forget that there are conditions to appropriating his promises. Okay, so you can know something or you can benefit from it by applying it and watching the benefits open up right before you. That's appropriating his promises. All right, now, Psalms 91. <clears throat> oh, sorry, you guys. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his wings and under his wings, excuse me, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I'm going to stop right there for a second. Uh, verse 9, let me read that real quick. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, let's stop there for a second. I want you to hear this. You notice that the first verse, <clears throat> oh, sorry. The first verse says you are not given to the elements of this world if you know where to hide if you know where to seek shelter. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you're out in the desert and it's 120 degrees, there are two main things you would like to have. Let's say three. One is water. Another one is one big shade tree. You'd love to have something that's, that casts a shade over you so you could get up under its shadow and find a place where you could cool off a little bit, get a break from that baking, cooking sun. And of course, the other thing you'd like to have is a nice breeze, summer breeze. So here's the problem. Many of us, we want all the benefits, all the comforts of home, but we don't want to go home. 
We don't want to live by the rules of the household. I just mentioned earlier how when I was 19, I lived in the car for three months. I didn't have to live in the car. But I did not want to abide by the rules of my parents. I thought I was grown, smelling myself. I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. So I was going to go out there and conquer the world all by myself. And the world was conquering me bit by bit till I finally got enough sense to run into the arms of God. But listen to this. When you are doing your thing, doing it your way, leaning to your own understanding, and you handle, let me handle this. One of the ways my husband and I used to joke years ago when we were talking smack back and forth, we bantered. We were joking, but we would banter back and forth. And I said, no, 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 you need to do blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you what to do. And, and he, he'd roll his eyes at me and he said, look, woman, you let me milk this cow. Some of y'all have that attitude, but you ain't playing. You ain't playing. You tell God in a New York minute through your attitude and through your choices, you let me milk this cow. I got this talking about forgive and love your enemies and get a soft answer turneth away wrath. I ain't got time for that. I'm dealing with a fool and I'm going to deal with them on their level. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> See, the reason that God has all these little stipulations that we don't often agree with when a moment arises and presents itself is because we are given to our flesh. We are given to our attitudes. We do lean to our own understanding. What we see, we think is what we're going to get. And we don't realize that God's ways are much higher than our ways because we want instant gratification. Forgiveness is not instant gratification. Love is not instant gratification. Keeping your mouth shut when you could cuss somebody out is not instant gratification. Seeing somebody get theirs. You can't see them get theirs when you're not watching for something bad to happen. You're minding your own business and you're praying for God to handle you so you don't mess that up trying to handle it and making a bad matter worse. You know, when you don't get that instant gratification, you start to feel like God is cheating you out of your glory. Baby, you never had glory till you start obeying God. When you start obeying God, some of the most difficult areas in your life where you have to obey to the point of tears, where you can't lean to your own understanding because for all intents and purposes, everything God wants you to do in this situation does not make sense to you. No, I don't want to do it that way. What's that going to get me? You have no idea till you start obeying. Now we're going to move on to Romans chapter eight. New Testament, Romans chapter 8. Hmm. I was laughing because Marlene and I were talking when we first got on. And she, she was already quoting one of the scriptures I knew I was going to read. <laughs> I said, boy, like Rashad says, we are truly connected because we're always going back and forth with bits and pieces. And then Andrea has a prayer request, and that's part of the message to it. I was like, wow, this is cute. Okay, now, starting at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, you notice there's a conditional thing there. Just like Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You got to dwell in that place in order to enjoy the shade. 
Ha! Huh? You got to live in God's house, abide by his rules in order to enjoy all the comforts of home. Can't live by your own rules. You got to live by God's. Well, here, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk, here's the condition, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It doesn't stop. At, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. There is no period at the end of that. It's a comma. The condition after the comma is who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you are walking after your flesh, baby cakes, yeah, you're going to be inundated with condemnation because you know you're handling it wrong. And condemnation follows flesh. Guilt is not of God, but guilt is of the devil and it is of flesh. Guilt comes from sin. A sinful mindset. A sinful condition. Sinful conditioning. Condemnation is a result of sin. Condemnation is a result of leaning to your own understanding. You don't have to deal with condemnation when you're not only in Christ Jesus, but you're walking after the Spirit. Hmm. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We discussed that right before we started this. Freedom comes from forgiveness. Freedom comes from loving your enemies. Loving your enemies takes the power away from them over you. It's crazy, but that's the way it works. It's not that you're doing them all that great or all that good. No, you're doing yourself good. It's a medicine that you need to take every day, all day. You don't take it every hour. You take it every second with every breath you breathe in. You take the medicine God gives of love. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, <clears throat> God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. When he went to the cross, when he obeyed till death, he condemned sin in his bottle, in his human body. The human body was in the form of sinful flesh because we as man are born in sin and shapen in iniquity. But he who came in flesh had committed no iniquity, had committed no sin. So through his obedience, which is what we are required to do when we are in Christ Jesus, through his obedience, he condemned sin in that flesh that he lived in. We are to condemn sin in the flesh we live in. We are to mortify the deeds of the body. Kill it! Kill it! You see a roach, you stomp on it, you want it dead! You don't want to invite it over for dinner. Your flesh should be no more welcome in your life than a roach is crawling on your table, next to your plate, in your house, anywhere. Your flesh should be no more welcome than a rat trying to get in your door. No, not in my house. I ain't having it. What's your attitude? Are you having it? Are you allowing it? Are you living it? Or are you mortifying the deeds of your flesh? Are you casting down every imagination and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ? What are you doing with that flesh? Hmm. The more you condemn sin, the less sin can condemn you. That just came to me just now. The more you condemn sin in the flesh, the less sin can condemn you. 
that verse four, that the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You notice the wording, the wording gets me in the King James because th there's a certain punch to it that gives other, other relational uh, meanings. <laughs> you know how a man, picture it now. Some of y'all been in nightclubs. Come on now. Come on with me. Don't act like you've been saved so long you don't remember. Picture a nightclub and you see a man checking out a woman. He's like, mm -hmm. right? Or you see a woman checking out a man. Right? What do they do when they see something they want? Huh? They go after it, don't they? They pursue it, hot pursuit. They start scheming in their mind. How do they go about uh, apprehending this? Woo! Yeah. They're either checking out the brick house or they're checking out this hunk. But either way, they're going to go after that bad thing. Oh, yeah, buddy. Because they are hankering for it. They're longing for it. It appeals to the eye. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Gots to have it, baby. Yeah. Well, my question to you is, are you pursuing God's righteousness with the same, with the same zeal that you pursued that at the nightclub back in the day? Mm -hmm. Ring, ring. Hey, what you doing? Oh, it's nine o'clock. Yeah, I just had to hear your voice before I went to bed. What you got to hear their voice for? Huh? What was the last time you said that to the Lord? I want to hear your voice. As the deer pants. Ah, so my soul longeth after thee, Lord. Oh, Lord, I long for you. When was the last time? You felt like that. Huh. Huh. Right. Mm-hmm. See, if you're not longing for God, you're also not going to long for his ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially those of you who are still getting to know him. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. You're getting to know him. You don't know him now. You're getting to know him. Just like he's helping you get to know yourself. So you're getting to know him. So you're not in love with him right now. You're learning to love. You're learning to obey. But you're getting to know him. So your hunger and thirst is not going to be at an all-time high all the time. So you have to oftentimes pray that God gives you a hunger. Gives you more of a thirst for him. More thirst and hunger for his ways. Hmm. Hmm. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. See, a lot of people stop at the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things, all those blessings, all the benefits. Mm -hmm. They come with the package, baby. Now, let's go on to verse 5. <clears throat> we, we dealt with going after the flesh. <laughs> you know, like a dog come, goes after a bone. You throw the bone. In. <laughs> yeah, he's, boy, he's, he's after that bone, boy. Don't get between the dog and his bone. When was the last time somebody got between you and God? What was your response? Verse 5, I'll leave you with that one. <clears throat> For they that are after the flesh... <clears throat> do mind the things of the flesh. Everything about the flesh becomes very important, magnified. Everything's a big deal. Everything's a monumental feat to overcome when you're in the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind <clears throat> is enmity against God. 
that is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. I know born again Christians. They say they're born again. And everything in their life is diametrically opposed to God's ways. And they have excused their way through the kingdom. Just like a person bumping his way up and jumping up in the line. They're excusing their way through the kingdom. Because they know they live in the dispensation of grace, they take every advantage of it. But God ain't a flunky and God ain't no fool. So as much as you know God loves you, as much as you know God has mercy, <clears throat> don't take him for a patsy and think that, that when you feel like it, you can live a sloppy, floppy life. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Some of you have a dysfunctional life because you have given God a dysfunctional offering of your body. You have not given your body as a living sacrifice. You gave, you lent God your body from time to time and made him pay it back because you wanted some control over it yourself so you could have those moments when you just want to live in your flesh. And that's just that. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm, mm, mm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Listen, that quickening of the Holy Spirit. It ain't just about, whoa, oh, I got chills, I got goose pimples. Oh, hallelujah, shanda, hallelujah. No, the quickening, it's an awakening. It's a sharpening of one's senses. It enables you to focus and zoom in on God's righteousness and holy ways. And when you zoom in and you focus, you, your attention is consumed by God. And when you're consumed by God's ways and you're going after the spirit rather than the flesh, you find you begin to see life in a whole different way. You begin to respond and feel differently. You know why? When the Bible says he quickens you, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry about that, through his spirit, the spirit quickens you because when you're quickened by the Holy Spirit, you are unctioned, you are compelled to do things God's way. He enables you to do all the things that naturally you wouldn't want to do. And then when you do it, you feel 10 times better about it than you would have had you done it your way and leaned to your own understanding. Hmm. Yeah. Crazy how that works. So what I want to say to you is, in verse 18, I got to read this because, you know, we think of suffering as woe is me. Oh, life is so hard. I can't pay my bills. I got gas. I got constipation. Oh, my leg hurts. No, 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 no. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen, the sufferings of this time, <clears throat> those times when somebody makes you feel like a fool and sometimes makes you look like a fool in other people's eyes and you take it and you walk away and you don't retaliate, you don't explain, you don't defend yourself, you walk away with your tail tucked between your legs begging God to help you hold your head up and face another day because you feel as small as a pebble right now. 
If you could just run and hide, you would. Sometimes people treat you in ways you do not deserve to be treated in. And you're still trying to do it God's way, even though they're not trying to do anything God's way, they're mistreating you. They could care less how they hurt you. They could care less how they humiliate you. And you know it. And you still got to forgive them. Ah, that's not fair. But it's right. Some of the old folks in church used to say, it's tight, baby. But it's right. Hard to maneuver in that one. But it's right. See, when you go after God, when you go after the things of the Spirit, you have got to want to shed everything that will slow you down. You've got to want to peel off every piece of flesh that's a stench in God's nostrils. you got to be willing to peel it all off at all costs, at the cost of your job at the cost of your income, at the cost of losing your house, at the cost of somebody dying on you, at the cost of somebody walking away from you, turning to another lover and leaving you with the kids and no income. Do you trust God with all of that? See, life can throw some curves your way. What will your response be? Will you be bitter and get back at him and pay back as a dog sucker? Or will you scratch and dig and reach and beg and plead and do everything you can to get God's ability working in your life? Get God's Holy Spirit to quicken your mortal bodies. Will you do everything it takes to mortify the deeds of the flesh because you don't want any roaches in your life? You don't even want any of you in your life because you know that you were born and shaped in iniquity. And you don't want your own contaminants in the mix. How badly do you want this holiness? Huh? Or are you willing to co-mingle, co-mingle sin with righteousness as it is convenient for your flesh for the moment? Mm. Think about that one. Whew. We have got to, The one thing I see is missing a lot in this world. It, it, it breaks my heart to see it. A born-again Christian's casual approach to righteousness. I am not legalistic at all. But I do believe in sterilization. I'm using that word for a reason. If I'm laying on a hospital bed, and they're preparing me for surgery. I will jump up out of that bed and run before I let some surgeon walk in with his party clothes from the night before smelling of liquor. You could tell he hadn't even washed his hands. He's not ready. His timing is off. His speech is slurred. It's like, ain't no way you touching me, buddy. You better take your butt back home. I'll call the cops before I let you try to put me under and do surgery on me. I will fight tooth and nail. No way you're going to put your hands on me. Now, the doctor might be feeling still kind of happy from the night before, a little high, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's ready to do surgery. See, some of us want to live the life of God and we want to come in his presence any old way. <clears throat> we want to enter in to the secret place of the Most High, just coming out from getting out from the bed from another lover. Mm. 
We want to come to God knowing what we just did to so-and-so the other day. And we are not going to apologize. We know we're wrong. And oh, well, they get their comeuppance and they got it. Hmm, I'm done. And you think that's okay with God? You can come to him drunk, high, attitude, with your little nasty ways. Won't even clean up your act for him. Because you're not ready to give some things up. You're just not ready to give it up. So, you just got to understand. He ain't got to do nothing, baby. But if you really want it, and even if you see a lacking in that hunger of really wanting it, ask God to give you that determination. Ask God to give you the hunger. Everything he requires of us, he equips us to do. He's not unfair. Hmm. Are you willing to go after God and after his ways the same way a dog goes after that bone? Are you willing to go after the things of the spirit? Go on hot pursuit like you did at that nightclub when you saw that hunk. Like you did at that nightclub when you saw that brick house. She's a brick. Ah. All right. <laughs> Got to have it. Got to have it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get laid tonight, baby. Oh, yeah, it's going to be hot and juicy. Well, how come it ain't hot and juicy with the Lord? How come it's always a dry spell? How come it's always, well, something's missing. When you know something's missing, acknowledge that bad boy. Take it to God. Say, Lord, there's something not right in my spirit. I'd rather do that than do this. I don't want to be that way. Do whatever you got to do with me. I mean, you have to be dead dog determined to take whatever pill he's willing to give you to help you get it right. Now, if Job can suffer like he did for seven years for a crime he did not commit, losing family, huh? losing riches, Losing everything and then suffering in his body. And he hadn't done anything to deserve it, but still trusting God. Some of y'all won't trust God if somebody hits your car and you got an ugly dent in your pretty new car. Well, how God let that happen? Life happens, y'all. Attacks from the enemy. That happens. That's part of what we have to go through in this life. That doesn't make God a liar. It makes him more to be a truthful God because he said, <laughs> trouble, you know, man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. Trouble, trouble everywhere, trouble over here. I said, trouble over there. There's always something. But that doesn't make God a liar. That doesn't mean God's not good. What did the Bible say about Job? He kept his integrity. He believed in God no matter what. So what did God do after the trial season was over? Ha, huh, the fullness of time. Double for his trouble. Brother man got rewarded big time. So much so he couldn't even miss what happened in the past. That man was so blessed by God. Where will you be when the trials hit you? What will happen when the attitudes come from all sides? Huh? Will you laugh at destruction or will you kick destruction in the balls? Because you ain't having it. You're going to do this your way. You're going to lean to your own understanding. You're going to put that man in his place. Ain't going to treat me like, nah. <laughs> wow. You're going to make matters worse or you're going to let God handle it in his time. There's an old song. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. 
I'm telling you. God will make it beautiful if you don't get make it a mess. Don't 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 make an anthill into a mountain. You don't no 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 no. You do not want to create a oh, how do I say this? You don't want to become a weapon of mass destruction when God could use you to be a beautiful testimony to his glory and his blessings. Which way are you going to have it? God's way? Or is it going to be your way or the highway? And the highway is the low way, baby, because God said, my ways are above your ways. Your, my thoughts above your thoughts. How are you going to have it? Your way? or God's way. You got to pray about that. You got to read God's word and build yourself up in the most holy faith because God definitely knows what's best. Father knows best. Do you trust daddy? Hmm. Well, we'll see by the way you live your life now, won't we? God bless you. Hope that gives you something to chew on. Amen.